everyone and welcome back. This is Wendy Historian and today we are talking about Rainbow Bondage Bear. In May of 2014, the Where We Are tour came to Manchester, England, and at that show, a fan threw a rainbow sherbet Build-A-Bear on stage. And according to the fan who claimed to have thrown it, the bear missed the stage completely and hit security instead. It was such a minor incident when it occurred that it wasn't even mentioned by anyone. It was just another act of chaos and prop tossing at a 1D concert. Fast forward just a couple of days, and during the London show of the Where We Are tour, fans noticed a curious and hilarious sight. A rainbow sherbet Build-A-Bear dressed in a duct tape approximation of a bondage costume. No kink shaming here. You do you, Rainbow Bondage Bear. At first, most fans loved the bear. First of all, the bear started appearing around the same time that the Rainbow Direction movement was starting, and so openly LGBTQIA plus representation within the Direction or fandom was at an all-time high. And a lot of LGBTQIA plus fans adopted the bear as a sort of mascot for inclusivity within the fandom. Secondly, in general, for the entirety of our lifespan, the Direction or fandom has had a preoccupation with sexually charged things. And so fans were delighted by this provocative bear and its unexpected appearance. And reappearance? And reappearance. A one-time return of a rainbow bear dressed in bondage gear would have been funny enough, but because the bear kept popping up over and over and over again attached to different pieces of the stage, in-person concert goers and online sleuths alike would try to spot the now aptly named rainbow bondage bear. And then in August, a Twitter account appeared for Mr. Bear. And it was confirmed to be the official account for rainbow bondage bear after the bear appeared on stage with a sign advertising the handle. Now the account started tweeting out some questionable photos that seemed to imply Mr. Bear might have a drinking problem. But after only a couple days, the Twitter account got taken down. Mr. Bear wasn't seen again until the Chicago show at the end of the month, where he appeared without his signature bondage look. <laughs> after tour ended, Mr. Bear lived on in the hearts of the fandom as concert legend. Until surprise! In February, on the eve of the start of the On the Road Again tour, the bear made a triumphant reappearance when Josh Devine, One Direction's live band drummer, posted a photo that featured Rainbow Bondage Bear. So the On the Road Again tour kickstarts, and Mr. Bear picks up right where he left off, appearing around the stage in various costumes, much to the fandom's delight. <laughs> then on the day of the Brussels show in June, Mr. Bear appeared with a little friend. <laughs> This was already a pretty important day for the tour because it was the first day that no control was added to the set list. So at first, Rainbow Bondage Bear's mini rainbow friend was overlooked, but we noticed him soon enough after. And we decided to name him SBB, or Sugar Baby Bear. As the tour went on, RBB and SBB became a lot more theatrical in their appearances. <laughs> Costumes became a lot more elaborate, and they were sometimes staged into scenes, such as when they were this apparent fireproof reference. <laughs> the bears were so beloved and such a big deal that Yahoo News UK started tracking how often the bears appeared and where they went. And in October, near the end of the tour, a new Twitter account was created for the pair of the bears, and the second to last show, the bears appeared on stage with a cell phone and a phone number that fans could text to talk to the bears. All told, wholesome interactive fun. But then following the tour, the bears began to act conspiratorially on social media, often making thinly veiled references to in real life One Direction situations. One of the better known examples of this was when like, Jimmy Kimmel did a bit on his show where he insulted us by comparing us to like screaming potatoes or something ridiculous like that, and everybody got really upset about it. And then a couple hours later, the bears appeared looking angry with potato mashing equipment. The bears had their finger on the pulse of the fandom. So what was the deal with these bears? These bears have caused untold speculation over the years. There are three prevailing theories as to who was behind the bears and why, starting with Josh Devine. In the beginning, fans were fairly certain that Josh, the live band's drummer, was responsible for these bears because Josh kept posting pictures to social media that Rainbow Bondage Bear was in. And the fans thought he was using the bears as a way to interact more directly with the fans off stage. Now, it's important to note that Josh denied having anything to do with the bears on Twitter. Oh, get off, get off, get it off of my kiss. And then later in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, he said not he, but a member of the crew was actually responsible for the bears. Second theory is Larry and Zam. Members of both pairings commonly cite these bears as proofs, with some fans believing that the bears are meant to send coded messages to believers, and other fans believing that the boys themselves are directly behind the bears. As time went on, photos of the bears started featuring references to iconic 20th century gay culture. 
combining those references with the constant references to in real life One Direction happening, fans thought there might be a connection. It is important to note that when asked about it directly during an interview in December of 2015, Harry said that a member of the crew was responsible for the bears. I was told to ask you guys about the rainbow bear. I believe it's a bear that was thrown on stage and the crew kept it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I believe so, yeah. In a 2017 interview, when he was asked if he was behind the Bears, Louis Tomlinson said he was not behind the Bears and he didn't know enough about them to say who was. You were always the primary suspect for who had the bear. Honestly, Is I, it you? I tell you now, honestly, God's honest truth, I knew nothing. I only used to see what everyone else see on Twitter. <laughs> one member of the crew or whatever. But yeah, no, honestly, I don't think I ever seen it in the, in the flesh. The final theory is that it was a crew member behind the bears. And this theory is popular because Harry and Josh said so. Andrich's costume that Mr. Bear first appeared wearing was made out of gaffer tape, which is a kind of tape used by stage crews. And whoever was responsible for the bears had to be someone who was always present on tour because the bears kept popping up across continents. It is important to note that Rainbow Bondage Bear was not a purely 1D phenomenon. It also appeared on stage at a Baba Mall concert and a Little Mix concert. And because no one person had ever come forward to confess to being behind Sugar Baby Bear and Rainbow Bondage Bear, the complex mystery of the bear's origins and purpose has continued to captivate and frustrate fans around the world.